Hi, I'm Matthew. And I'm Matthias. Follow us in our powerlifting journey. Uh, it all started with my elder brother. Uh, he was training in the gym and then his friend told him, Hey, uh, why not you try out powerlifting? You're quite strong. So he tried it out, he loved it. And then uh, after that, I was forced into the gym by him. Uh, I was a computer game uh, addict then and I really didn't want anything to do with the gym. But unfortunately, or fortunately, uh, I'm here now. And it's been, yeah, eight years. In the start, I, it wasn't so much of uh, me wanting to be in the gym with them or wanting to exercise. But it's, I would say more forced. I was forced to go into the gym to train my, my other two brothers. And I think gradually when I train more, I see more progress in my lifts. I gradually get more um, excited about training. And after seeing my brother compete, I also wanted to compete. Yeah. So that was the reason I started powerlifting. I just completed my O-levels and I had a few months of holiday. I think it was two or three months. So uh, I, I knew that I was going to compete in the World Championships uh, in June of 2017. So for the first two months, I think, for, yeah, for the first two months of my holidays, uh, I worked part-time at this Korean cafe and uh, yeah, save as much money as I can, you know, try uh, not to spend, you know, any of that money. Um, you know, even on meals, on, on uh, my non-existent social life, <laughs> that kind of stuff. Yeah, it was quite interesting because after work, I had to go train. Sometimes my feet were sore from standing the whole day and then I had to train after that, but um, that became uh, a routine and I got used to it. Uh, obviously, training could have gone better if I had more time to recover um, instead of, you know, standing all day. But uh, I guess that made the journey a lot more satisfying. Uh, we landed in Belarus. Uh, it was a long trip from Singapore, but uh, we made it. And then uh, I proceeded, you know, to the hotel because I was exhausted from the flight. Um, I was three kilos overweight. So from there, I had to uh, cut water by dehydrating myself and then um, going through uh, the sauna right, to shed even more water to make the weight. And uh, I remember competition day, it was very tight. We timed it just nice, right? Uh, once I'm out of the sauna, I'm kind of ready to step on the scale. And then after that, uh, eat everything back, right? We had two hours and then competition starts. So we had to warm up and everything within that two hours and then eat back whatever we can. So um, for some reason, I remember I was bloating. I, I wasn't, my body wasn't absorbing whatever I was eating. I don't know if it's the nerves or uh, what went wrong on that day itself. Um, but it was just terrible. And then with your body not absorbing all these nutrients, uh, you tend to cramp up because there is an uh, imbalance in your muscle for, uh, there's a sodium and potassium imbalance in your muscle. So you tend to cramp up. And that was what happened. Uh, I cramped so bad that I could only, uh, after my first attempt of the squat, uh, I went backstage. Uh, I couldn't walk. I just was there and I was panicking because um, I, I knew I was gunning for the world record in that competition. And, you know, having spent so much money, having gone through, you know, all the struggles to get that money and, and to fly there and to compete, um, it's, it's really all or nothing. So uh, it's unconventional, but we... Uh, my, my elder brother made a call to skip the second attempt so that I have more time to rest and make sure, you know, my, I'm not cramping up as bad and then go for the third attempt for uh, breaking the world record. So that happened. Uh, I remember backstage, I was, it was crazy. I mean, it's, it's not that I can't perform. You know, mentally, I'm there, I, for sure. But physically, nothing is working right and then uh, when i went onto stage uh I, I just remember it's all or nothing because if i made it i got the gold medal and the world record 
if I didn't, I would end up fourth. So not even a squad medal, right? Uh, going out there, uh, it was just nerves because I don't know what my body could do. Uh, but I thought whatever it is, you know, if, if, uh, if I cramp up, I cramp up, it doesn't matter. All I need to do is to get the weight up. So I went out there and fortunately, by some miraculous reason, I got it up. Uh, I remember wrecking the bar back and then turning around and just jumping onto my brother's shoulders and then we just ran backstage. <laughs> yeah, it was just this whole, it was, just, it was very overwhelming. Yeah, and, and I took uh, a second to uh, process what had happened, which was me breaking a world record. We arrived at the airport, ready to go home and celebrate with our friends and family. Uh, but unfortunately, we were held up by customs. Uh, and then they claimed that, oh, uh, actually, you stayed beyond uh, five days because Singapore is five days free, uh, visa free. So we don't have to apply for a visa. Um, but upon arrival, I did ask them, you know, um, we, are, we will be here about like five days and one hour. What if we come to the airport one hour earlier, you know, or in fact, we were there like way earlier than that. Uh, but then they said, uh, upon arrival on the airport, they said, no, we counted it at six days. Uh, you have violated our rules, blah, blah, blah. So they, uh, they took us to this like holding cell area and then kind of interrogated us, asking us questions that we have already answered. And uh, yeah, it was just panic. We, we contacted uh, our, our parents back home and, and you know, uh, my mum was saying like, okay, we will get you, you know, on the first flight out, blah, blah, blah. But the first flight out was the next day or two. And then um, what, uh, so powerlifting Singapore's uh, representative uh, proposed for us to do uh, crowdfunding. And then uh, my, my family wasn't against it. You know, me and Marcus, we, we thought that, yeah, why, why not, right? So... Uh, we did it and uh, it got a national news. In fact, it kind of blew up because of that. And uh, yeah, so we finally went home after being stuck in the airport for about like two days. Yeah, yeah, being stuck in the airport for two days. Uh, we slept at this like, there was this row of chairs that we slept on. And then uh, I remember there's this picture, if you can find it, right? It was me like knocked out and then Marcus taking a selfie for for I don't know for fun or for I don't know but yeah that, that happened I, I always had this chat with my brothers and I always said that you know um, we, we had this um, mutual understanding that if we get funding from the government um, it's always a bonus but if we don't, we will still be uh, proud to, you know, raise the flag and call ourselves Singaporeans. Yeah, so it's, um, yeah, it's, it's a bonus if, if the country really um, funds powerlifting. But for us, um, whether the country funds powerlifting or not, it's uh, not beyond our control, but um, we will always be proud to stand on stage to carry the flag. I would say you never know till you try, and it's just that whatever you try, put in 100%, 101%. You know, going beyond what you think you're capable of, going beyond what was imaginable, and you find yourself getting up in uh, a very unique position, like myself. I guess my message to others is to really um, go beyond your adversities, because you never know, you know, um, where life will take you. And I guess um, trying is the only way that you'll find out. <laughs>